Despite the 77 uh, seat majority in the House, Speaker Pelosi passed her cap and trade energy tax bill on June 26th by just one vote over the the uh, the margin. In other words, the majority in this in the House is 218. She got 219 votes. And against this backdrop, the Senate will begin the process of considering yet another cap-and-trade bill. I would like to note that the Senate is not new to this like the House was. The Senate has, we've actually debated this five times. We've had three votes in 2003, 2005, and 2008, each time uh, defeating it uh, substantially and a little bit more each time. As I understand it, you intend to hold a series of hearings with the hope of marking up a bill before the August recess. And let me just say, Madam Chairman, I, I commend you for holding the hearings. The minority jointly issued the letter that you referred to outlining our request for a series of legislative hearings that are based on legislation, based on legislation. We've got to have something in front of us. Uh, as I look at the calendar, it appears that we're going to be considering a massive bill in a very low, narrow window of time. So the question arises, when will we see the bill that you intend to mark up? I hope we don't repeat the process of the House, and that is having a substitute appear at 3 o'clock in the morning of the very day that we're going to vote. Uh, we just uh, that, That's totally unacceptable by by should be by everyone. The American people and their elected representatives deserve an open, transparent, and thorough review of any legislation that is that the Washington Post described it uh, will reshape America's economy in dozens of ways that many people don't uh, realize. And you can be sure of this. Once the American public realizes what this legislation will do to their wallets, they will resoundingly reject it. Perhaps that explains why we are rushing uh, cap and trade through the Senate, uh, the tax so fast. The public is already on record rejecting energy taxes, considering a new poll, Rasmussen, this, uh, Madam uh, Chairman, this just six days ago, 56% of the Americans will not, are not willing to pay anything to fight global warming. This includes higher utility costs, which under cap and trade, as President Obama said, would necessarily uh, skyrocket. The bottom line is this. However you spin the debate, or whatever schemes we concoct to hide the higher costs consumers will pay, the public will find out. And when they do, they will reject those schemes and reject the spin, and they will look instead for solutions that create jobs, strengthen energy security, and increase our global competitiveness. Now, Madam Chairman, when it comes to legislative tools, there's a better way. Whether it is reducing dependence on foreign oil or increasing access to clean, affordable, and reliable uh, sources of energy, we do have answers. You have stated that we're the party of no. Well, that's true. We say no to higher energy costs, no to subsidizing the east and west coast at the expense of the heartland, no to more bureaucracy and red tape, no to the largest tax increase in American history, and no to sending our manufacturing jobs to China and India. And we say yes to an all of the above domestic energy policy, uh, which includes nuclear, clean coal, uh, natural gas, wind, uh, solar, geothermal. We say yes to a greater access to all sources of clean and reliable energy we have right here at home. And if we did this, we, would, we could stop all reliance on the Middle East. So I am looking forward to the uh, hearings, and I'm most anxious to, um, to see what kind of a document we'll have a chance to debate. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Senator, thank you for your constructive um, words, and I think our bill will reflect your yeses. And um, I just want to correct the record, and I would ask unanimous consent to place in the record uh, the Markey bill, the portion of which deals with a tax credit. There are no new taxes, but there's a tax credit for consumers. Uh, let, let me make an, an inquiry here, Madam yes. Chairman, because uh, if, in the event that after each statement is made that you uh, want to refute them, I think we should have a chance to do the same thing, and that okay. would just be that's endless, fair. though, sure. if we started that. So that's fair enough. Let's watch it. Okay. Thank you. That's fair enough. I don't mind if you want to refute it. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead. The, <laughs> what we are dealing with here is going to be a large tax increase. I was interested in some of the, uh, the CBO reports that said, well, what we're going to do is take this large sum of money that comes in under cap and trade, and we'll go ahead and return it to the people who are paying taxes. Well, it's coming from them originally, and so I would certainly not want to give any credibility 
to any kind of an evaluation as to the cost to the American people if they're predicated on the, 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 the assumption that we have a cap and trade uh, tax raising huge amounts of money from the American people in the form of energy costs and then turning around and giving that money back to them. I stand by my words. Now I'm going to say who